Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nowak again. Welcome to my channel. I'm showing you an aquarium. This is a saltwater aquarium. Uh, the picture is a little blurry, sorry about it. Uh, just to show you, this is a deep sand bed system. And it depends on fauna or in fauna, if you want to say, to keep it alive or you have to keep it stirred up constantly. Unlike the picture you're seeing here that you could say, well, this is a deep sand bed, but this is using a plenum and it works a little bit different than the aquarium we just saw that was in the saltwater. Now that was used a very long time ago. I think I've explained to you the fauna and in fauna that needs to stay alive in such a sand bed, or you're going to have to have something that digs in the sand bed, such as like a uh, sea cucumber or something else to keep that sand bed open so it doesn't start developing ammonia. Where on the other hand, uh, the 15 gallon that you're looking at here, it doesn't need that, okay, because it is using what is called a plenum. And you can see the difference between the two pictures of what happens with a deep sand bed or mud compared to a plenum. And there's a difference because with the plenum that you're looking at, the tank you're looking at now, does not require that you keep stirring the substrate up. It doesn't require in fauna or fauna to help keep it open. In other words, like uh, Malaysian Liberian snails, let's say, that really don't dig super deep into the substrate. But it makes a huge difference when you're making a saltwater aquarium or freshwater aquarium that uh, how the biological activity will present itself in the aquarium that you're looking at. And that's one thing I wanted to show you that such as making deep sand beds uh, kind of went out of favor where a lot of hobbyists don't do deep sand beds anymore. They do very shallow sand beds. Another thing I want to talk about, if you see the picture on the left, how the algae's all over that piece of wood, driftwood there, and you look on the right, now, if you look on the right at the piece of driftwood and you look on the left, you can see all the algae that's all over that driftwood. On the right-hand side, I got the ram snails, which I explained to you in my last video. They clean that piece of driftwood off in five days. That's it. In five days' time, they literally had taken all that algae off. So if you're thinking about getting some ram snails. This is what they will do. They do eat algae profusely. Now let's get into what I wanted to get into is a Geophagus belizaneae. And uh, one thing that I like about these fish is their eyes are like red, white, and blue. And they got the speckles on them. They got the they got the, on their fins, they have the entrails going on their fins, much like what you see on angelfish. And these particular geophagus of all the other geophagus I have had seem to be the most interesting for myself. And the reason is because they grow that hump. And if you look at the hump real close, it almost looks like a fatty hump that's growing and you can almost see into the hump under bright light or under the light, right light conditions. And as they get older, they do get more colorful as they get older. So patience is needed with this particular geophagus compared to some others. But as you can see, it's starting to look pretty good. These aren't even a year old. I got them when they were only about an inch and a half. And uh, they still have a lot of growth left in them. That's the dominating male you're looking at right there. That's the alpha male. Yet there are other males in there, or another male that I know, but it doesn't seem to be grown the hump as big as the dominating alpha male on this one. However, 
using the word alpha male is a little misleading, even though these are cichlids. And let me explain to you about this. These are a more uh, friendly species of cichlid. And they don't seem to uh, be a fighter, constantly wanting to fight, constantly wanting to pick on each other, much like your Mabunas or your Tanganyikas or something. They seem to be a more docile, as you could tell how long their fins get. So they don't seem to be one of those cichlids that are constantly battling. The eyes, the red, white, and blue eyes, as I always call them, I, I like to call them the patriotic cichlid because you don't see fish that appear to have red, white, and blue eyes, the same as our flag. And they do get a lot more colorful as they get older. And that hump that you're looking at there, it's already beginning to develop, will get bigger and bigger. In fact, they actually become, for myself, when you see a full-grown one, it's just as, to me, as appealing as a flower heart. The only difference between a flower horn, it will get a, you know, hump on its head, kind of looking like a golf ball or even bigger, where these don't. They just get a hump on their head, much like some of your African cichlids will sometimes get a hump on their head as they get older. Age does that to them. But this particular one gets a nice big hump and becomes a show fish. The good thing about it, okay, is it becomes a show fish that it doesn't become aggressive like the flower horn, where you could only have one in your tank. They seem to uh, be a friendlier fish. They, uh, they seem to take a wide range of temperatures all the way to uh, 68 degrees, all the way up to 85 degrees comfortably. And uh, I know 68 sounds a little low, but I've had them go as low as 68 degrees, even in this tank, and they don't seem to be um, susceptible to like getting sick with a secondary kind of a ick or slime or 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 shimmy. Uh, they seem to recover from it if it does go low, like 68 degrees, where other cichlids they may wind up getting sick on you, and they can't take that temperature. Where these can take a little bit of dip of temperature. Because of that, I would have to say, I would even recommend this fish to be beginner fish. Now, they're not like other fish that are out there that are cichlids. Let's say like the convict cichlid. That's a beginner fish. But convicts can get a little nasty as they uh, get bigger. And that's the problem with them. Or the Jack Dempsey's or the Texas cichlid. Uh, some of them become a little nasty as they get bigger, the, and you have to keep them almost by themselves because they do get nasty. These don't seem to do that. They seem to be a little more mild temper of a, of a fish. So that's why I say even a beginner could have these fish. Now, I always buy more fish than... I need to get male and female. If you want to get a male and female, they usually recommend you buy six fish. When I bought these, they were in good shape. One kind of hit off, though, after I bought them. And I would say within two weeks, that one that was hiding a lot, it passed away. And that's something that, that does happen. Okay, duh. I that's not something to beat up on the shipper about. It's just... It, it's what happens. A fish can be stressed. The shipper doesn't see it. And it gets in your tank. And that stress can wind up being its demise. So now I have five of them out of the six. And they're doing quite well. They're, they will eat anything. They will eat live food. They will eat dry food. They will eat flake food. Anything you want to give them, they will eat. They will eat several times a day. They're good. They do, of course, they're geophagus, so they're going to be earth movers. That's what geophagus means. And they will pick up the stones, much like that of a goldfish, and spit them out, siphoning through it for food, like all geophagus. But like I said, the big difference, if you look at them, 
they really get that hump. Now, unfortunately, when they get bigger, I'll be able to show you. But once you see one that is full grown, uh, they, that kind of fish gives you that wow factor. You know, not too many fish, when they get bigger, give you a wow factor, unless they're huge fish, like an Oscar gets big, and you say, oh, wow, look how big that fish is. But these fish aren't that, that they don't grow that big, maybe six inches or so, but they just have that wow factor when you look at them as a beautiful specimen fish. And they're not really that expensive. That's the big thing about them. But the worst thing about them is trying to obtain them, trying to buy them. Not a lot of stores will carry them for some reason. I don't know why. But in all the years I've been dealing with fish, I've had them maybe 20, 20 plus years ago, maybe in the 90s. So over 20 plus years ago was the last time I had them and saw them even at a fish store. These I had to order online. As you see the little dots all over their fins, uh, real nice looking uh, geophagus. Compared to some of the other ones, some of the other ones, some of the geophagus to me, they get a little boring, where this fish doesn't get boring because of its head, and it's constantly growing that big head on them, and gives them that unique look of fish that wind up getting a big head, much like that of goldfish, you know, when you when you find a, um, a ranchu or something that grows a big, huge head, you can't even see its eyes anymore. To me, that's that's kind of neat looking. You know, I know some may think not so, but that's the same way with this fish. They they grow that big, huge head, and it's uh, it's something you have to see when they're full grown. So I thought I would do this quick shark video because if you can find the fish, buy it. Even if you're a beginner, it's something you could do if you're a beginner. Be patient with it, with its growth rate. I would say 40 gallon breeder will be good for a few of these. 75 gallon, great. 55 gallon will be great. And uh, just don't put anything aggressive in there that will chew on their fins and be overly aggressive because they are not an aggressive cichlid, okay? Unfortunately, they are more on the docile side as far as the ones I have had. And that's it for this video. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and happy fish keeping.